Welcome back, America. We have a good friend of mine, Stephen A. Smith. You know, Stephen A. Smith, I'm glad you're here. People say, why do you talk about him? Why are you friends with him? I don't understand that question. Do I have to be friends only with people who agree with me? Hell, my wife doesn't agree with me all the time. My wife, who you know, it's just ridiculous. Yes. But tell people why we're friends, why we get along. Well, first of all, I, I had the pleasure of meeting you years ago at, at a radio convention, and I've always found you to be somebody who tells it uh, like you see it. And you know where Mark Levin is coming from, whether you like it or not. And that's something, obviously, we have in common. We speak our mind. We speak what I, we believe our truth is and, and, and should be, and we go with it from there. And if we disagree, we can disagree without being disagreeable, which is what this world should be all about. So it doesn't matter to me whether our politics agree or don't dis or don't agree. Um, I know I respect the hell out of you. I know that's reciprocated, and, and that's how friendships are made, as far as I'm concerned. You have a great new podcast, Stephen A. Smith Show podcast on YouTube. You've got First Take, outstanding show on ESPN. You also have a wonderful book, Straight Shooter, uh, that was on the New York Times bestseller list for two and a half months, for crying out loud. That's a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you want to kind of spread beyond sports. You don't want to eliminate sports. You don't want to leave it behind. That's your bread and butter. Right. That's your wheelhouse. You're the rain man in sports, right. as far as I'm concerned. I can ask you any question. You'll say, well, 1974, and I'm going, whoa, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, <clears throat> but the truth is you want to get involved in the culture, politics to a point, in society, because you have thoughts about that too. And if I'm correct, I, I believe you've told me you're not a Republican, you're not a Democrat, you're an independent, you've voted both ways before. You have an yes. open mind yes, about I candidates. So when yeah. you're... Watching, without getting in the names, when you're thinking about candidates and so forth, sure. what do you want in a candidate? Uh, competence, knowledge, uh, but more importantly uh, uh, than anything else, particularly when it comes to the presidency, statesmanship. I want somebody that understands that they're, uh, you know, they're, they're overseeing and they're governing all the people, not just their constituency, and they're putting America first, not just their own specific interests. As a voter, we may tend to do that, obviously, for the most part, whether your position is immigration, abortion, the economy, the list goes on and on. As a voter, you may have a monolithic view um, in terms of those things or certainly where your, your, your passion lies. But when you are an elected official, your job is to do what you perceive to be in the best interest of the country. And obviously, from time to time, that varies. There's not, a, there's not a, a direct monolithic view to take at all times, as far as I'm concerned. But I think statesmanship goes a long way towards that and putting America first as opposed to our own individual self-interest. There's a lot of decisions as an individual that I may make that I might believe is in my best interest. But if I were the president of the United States, if I was a senator, if I was a congressional figure, then it would be I would take into account my constituents and most importantly, what's in the best interest of the whole as opposed to small individual parts. That's what I believe governing is all about, and that's what I take into consideration anytime I'm voting for someone. Now, you're not an ideologue. You've told me that. You like to look at issues. Exactly. You might go with a Republican. You might go with yes. a Democrat. But in that, you're in the minority, aren't you? Because a lot of the hosts in sports tend to be Democrats, tend to be left-wing, not all, yes. but a lot of them. A lot of the athletes... Mm -hmm particularly depending on what the sport is, same thing. Uh, do you ever discuss politics or anything other than sports when you're not on air with these folks? Well, sometimes they, 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 they try to get a little bit out of hand, and then I check them. That's what I do. Um, certainly when they try to debate with me, I'm ready for it. If I'm not knowledgeable about something, I'm open and honest about it. If I believe I am knowledgeable about it, then I'll express that knowledge. Uh, but more importantly than anything else, the issue of fairness comes into play. And a lot of times when you see people like yourself or Sean Hannity on the right or others on the left or what I consider to be a left centrist, somebody like Chris Cuomo and others, I take into account not just your knowledge, but where you're coming from and why you feel the way that you feel. A lot of times when we see people and they're dogged in their beliefs, this one thing to express that doggedness with the level of, of, of adamance and emphasis that you may place on it, a lot of times what I take into consideration is what is coming from the other side and how you're warding that off. The fact that there are people who are unreasonable, who won't, who won't 
lean on facts and elect to lean on emotion and elect to lean on preference or ideology as opposed to what's in the best interest of the whole. These are all the things that I analyze and I take all of those things into consideration depending on who I'm talking to. And the more reasonable somebody is, the more I'm apt to listen to them because number one, they're making sense. And number two, they're expressing and disseminating a strong interest in being fair and fair minded. And when that is the case, I think those are the kind of people you went on Capitol Hill because those are the kind of people that can talk to Mark Levin and they could go on CNN or vice versa. They don't have to stay on one side because they understand their position is somewhat universal to some degree and it's in the best interest of the whole. And when that's the case, it's hard for anybody to look at you and question your intent. And when they don't get to question your intent, then it's hard for them to argue with anything other than facts. And that's what I think the vast majority of American citizens need, particularly in this day more so than ever. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.